Good morning. Well, oh, well, oh, well. <coughs> Here we are. Here we are. Jolly old Ingerland. Hot for child. Where hurricanes hardly ever happen. This is the letter 1 Peter. Chapter 4, verses 12 to the end. Dear friends suffering for being a Christian. <clears throat> Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are, are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name, for it is time for judgment to get, begin with the family of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome, what will be, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God, and if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Amen. Well, <laughs> boy, oh boy. Sorry, I snuffled. Oh, Lord, suffering, justice, justice, why suffering, why injustice? Well, where's justice for, I mean, the big obvious matter is the Jews who were murdered in, in the Holocaust, obviously. But there's injustice going on left, right and centre all around the world in, in countless ways. Where's the justice? How, how, did, how was justice achieved? Try a few Germans after the Second World War. That doesn't bring people back. I mean, that is just one. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Pol Pot just popped into my head, the guy in Cambodia who <coughs> wiped out, I believe, something like two million people. I mean, they're just... So one doesn't have to search very far to find monstrous injustice. This friend of mine over the weekend saying, well, you know, this loving God, uh, feed the world with Christ, come and feed the world with the two fishes and so on. So, I mean, that's not born of, of their ill deeds, the, the people who die of starvation. There are the two commandments. I'm, in one sense, a very simple soul. So, love God, 
and then love your neighbor as yourself. So weigh up all your everything just against those two commandments. First of all, you love God. You put God first. Okay, you fear God. I'm just, I listen every day, in fact, to, amongst other things, Psalm uh, 147 sung a cappella, and at the end of it, it is, uh, I mean, it's love God, but fear God. And I've questioned that many a time. If he's this loving God, then we must fear him. Well, it's there in Psalm uh, 147. God is the universe, for heaven's sake. We are just little pimples, each individual human being, but we have the capacity to aspire to something higher. And just through the two commandments, Christ came to fulfill the law, the law being the Torah, the first five books in the Bible, the rules, God's rules, Moses brought them down, etc., from Mount Nyeh, whichever mount it was, <laughs> brain. It's about three in the morning, it's not entirely awake yet. It's drizzling here in England too, with gentle rain that droppeth as mercy from the heavens or something. Uh, that's Shakespeare somewhere. Uh, the Merchant of Venice, I think. Portia's speech. Uh, we studied it at school for our sins. <laughs> I've never liked Shakespeare. <laughs> I know he's brilliant, but there we are. Awfully sorry. Mr. William uh, Shakespeare. Right. These words of Peter, I'm sure that must be Simon Peter, Cephas, the rock, uh, who founded the, the sort of human uh, Christian church. The one who denied Christ three times. I'm sure that's significant. When the, the crop crowed, etc., then Peter denied Christ. And then at the end of the Gospel of John, Christ says of Simon Peter, Cephas, the rock, you know, you will be led, your body will become infirm and you'll go where you don't want to go and this and that. But earlier on, he says to Peter, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, <coughs> feed my sheep. Who are my sheep or my sheep? Absolutely, in that context, are one's fellow human beings, and you feed with the word of God. Amen. As one does, I've got one of these magic machines, so you can look stuff up, and on YouTube there's this preacher chap they've been talking about who possibly was influential in radicalising this young Somali chap to go and just stab any old politician. That's what it sounded like, listening to the news last night uh, on the BBC and so on. Mostly, I get BBC news, I know there are other news too, and I do go and check them out too sometimes. Um, radicalised by this, this Muslim preacher, so I watched him being interviewed by Jeremy Paxman, who used to be a very good uh, journalist on the BBC uh, Newsnight programme, and so on and so on. It's in the Old Testament. If you do not come speaking of peace, then there's something wrong. If your message is not 
one of peace, there is something wrong. Christ's message was exclusively apart from the overturning of the money lenders' tables in the temple because they were desecrating God's house with money, i.e. earthly things, not God. He deliberately chose to tie a cord together and so, and then come and sort of overturn the money lenders' tables <coughs> in the temple was the point. They were desecrating God's holy place with money, worldly things. And that is really the only act of violence that Christ performed in the whole of his ministry. Amen. So if you do not hear Christ, and I do, and his message is exclusively, apart from that, really just love and peace and, and stuff like that. Not radicalizing people to go and randomly stab politicians or blow people up. I mean, we've got Afghanistan bubbling away. I mean, we don't hear about Syria at the moment, quite frankly. I'm sure that is still absolutely bubbling away. People suffering, there's Yemen, Saudi Arabia. We don't hear of that at the moment. That's sort of pushed off the news agenda. And so many other situations where there's kind of nationwide suffering, but in personal, at a personal level, so just a personal note, <sighs> I'm afraid, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the English state, talking about justice here, may as well have taken a knife and slit my son's throat. His name is Robert Francis. They may as well have taken a knife and slit his throat, the English legal system. My mother was a maternity sister. She never knew her own grandchild because of the English legal system. I've been made homeless because of this. I've traveled the world because of this. It has dominated the last 30 years of my life because of this, the English legal system and the lies of my former wife. Amen. My mother never knew her grandchild. The poor little fellow never knew his lovely, normal, lovely father's family. Well, it's evil. That woman is evil. Now, I'm absolutely clear about this. <coughs> I revert to Romans 12. St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. You must love your enemies. Feed them, water them, wish them a long life so they may repent of their evil. And it continues, this will heap coals, burning coals of fire upon their heads. And it also says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So you never, as a human being, must ever contemplate taking vengeance. Acts of violence. Let God deal with that side of things. And he will. We touched on it this evening. A friend came round. I'm at Sarah's place. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me, <coughs> Sarah being this lovely lung Christian lady I know, we definitively sleep in separate rooms. I'm in the living room here. She's in her bedroom over there. I've got two doors closed between us, so hopefully I'm not waking her up. She's a working girl. Well young woman of 31, I'm 65, so there we are. 
But we are both Christians and there, there we are. There will never be in this world justice for my son, Robert Francis. My former wife told a pack of lies in the English court at uh, number 351 Silvery Boulevard, Milton Keynes, County Court. And they, his Honour Judge O'Connor, I remember his name well, made his first draconian decision and it was against me. And I come from a good family. She, my former wife, had been sexually abused by her own father and therefore traumatized by it. So I really do get false sexual relations between adults and young people. I really do get it because I'm still suffering from it. I've got acute heart failure and a broken left leg. So I really do get it. I come from a good family. None of that sort of nonsense in my family. My grandfather was a Guy's MD from Guy's Hospital. My mother trained at Guy's Hospital as a medical maternity sister. I trained at Bristol University as a medical doctor. So I really do get it. So these neighbours kicked off my home, my Christian broadcasting place, my workplace in Annick, Northumbria. Cuba. There were drugs dealings going on all around me. They were offering me joints and stuff like that. These neighbors <coughs> and I stood up to them and the police did not assist me for two and a half weeks. These people were calling me a pedophile in public all around the place. Well, that's very dangerous in a small community. I could get killed for that. And they did nothing. And the only conclusion I can come to is the police were taking backhanders from someone somewhere. So the police therefore are involved. The chief constable is a Mr. Winton Keenan, currently of the Northumbria police. I'm not pursuing them. Let God take his vengeance on them. If that is the case, fine, good. Let it happen. May it be so. So that's my personal stuff. I physically watched a small child um, in Africa, South Africa. The little thing had AIDS, had no language, had been locked away in a cupboard. You know, the mothers have had a how's your father with the lorry drivers coming through in a town called Middleburg, where the big motorways cross. So obviously the men in the big lorries have money and there are the girls there and there we are. Um, had no language. We christened it Luke eventually. It had no name. Let's just say Ma. No language. No socialization. Just locked in the cupboard somewhere. Didn't actually die in my arms, but might well have done. I used to walk around the room with him, that little boy. The best answer I've ever had to that was from a, a Christian nun, a sister, Roman Catholic, 
and their little souls go straight to heaven. Well, okay. I readily recognize it is very hard to see God's loving purpose in this world. Peter here addresses it. Uh, the letter of James too is very beautiful. So Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, and so on. For through suffering, it's, it's a blessing. You come to wisdom. Curious, I can just hear the drip of the rain. It's just sort of light drizzle. Hmm. Amen. 